Well, good morning. I'm here at the State Emergency Operations Center in Tallahassee to provide an update on Hurricane Debbie. It has made landfall uh, near Steenhatchee as of 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, joining me uh, today to discuss uh, some of this will be Kevin Guthrie, who's uh, the, the Executive Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, and you'll hear from him shortly. Uh, we are still at a level one activation. We continue to utilize all available resources of the state emergency response team uh, to respond to this storm. This is a, a category one hurricane. Uh, it has followed a track very, very similar to Hurricane Idalia 11 months ago. Uh, the maximum sustained winds for Debbie have reached 80 miles an hour with higher gusts throughout the storm area. Uh, to contrast that with Idalia, Idalia reached close to 120 mile per hour in sustained winds. Uh, we have seen significant storm surge. Uh, we have seen inundation. Uh, we have seen and will continue to see flooding in very parts uh, of the state of Florida. This storm is expected to move throughout north central Florida uh, and likely go into Georgia and in the Carolinas. Uh, yesterday and into this morning, we saw impacts uh, throughout the west coast of Florida, starting in southwest Florida uh, and continuing up the coast. Uh, this storm has produced and will likely produce uh, significant flooding events from Sarasota Bradenton area all the way up to northern Florida. And that's not something that just happens when the storm passes. There's a threat, ongoing threat of that uh, over the ensuing days. Now that Hurricane Debbie is making landfall, the most important thing to do is to just protect yourself and protect your family. Uh, don't go out into this storm. Uh, don't drive on the roads, particularly when they're flooded. Uh, we have had some traffic uh, mishaps over the last 12 hours uh, and when you have flood situations that is the number one way where we will see fatalities is by people being out on the roads and hydroplaning or having other problems uh, so do not go walk or drive into flooded roadways there are hazards there they're dangerous uh, we want everybody to be safe um, power uh, so far, we have about 143,000 Floridians without power. Uh, we have a lot of restoration personnel ready to go uh, to get it back on. Uh, I, I think because that this is a Category 1 with 80 mile an hour sustained winds, uh, the total number of power outages are not going to reach the level, level that they did with Hurricane Idalia and certainly not the level that they did with Hurricane Ian. Uh, back in 2022, uh, but we do have 17,000 linemen that are ready to assist with restoring power immediately. And I know a lot of the utilities have already restored hundreds of thousands of folks uh, starting uh, uh, yesterday. We also have Starlink internet ready to deploy if that is needed. So we're standing by, we wanna assist all the local uh, communities with, with anything that they need. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, we have been approved for federal disaster assistance. Uh, we, our pre-landfall declaration was approved. Uh, our National State Guard are ready for search, rescue, and humanitarian assistance as needed. State emergency response teams also fully engaged in preparedness and now our response efforts. Uh, we have our Florida Highway Patrol that are uh, ready to enter their Alpha Bravo shifts. That's 24 hour, round the clock, nonstop shifts. Uh, we have 3,000 service members from the Florida National Guard that are on standby, uh, and that includes search and rescue, route clearance, distribution, and protection of critical infrastructure. They have 10 rotary aircraft and over 400 tactical vehicles staged to support relief operations. And we have our Florida State Guard, where we have 100 soldiers, nine shallow water vessels, 10 UTVs, two amphibious rescue vehicles, and seven search and rescue crews uh, ready to be deployed from Camp Landing as needed. Uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife, as the flooding happens, uh, they have 12 swift water rescue teams uh, ready to go. And, and they are gonna be very dynamic in this and move to where the, the problems are. Uh, we've also have on, on hand for this storm statewide, uh, 11 million bottles of water, almost 3 million shelf stable meals. Uh, we do not anticipate 
uh, needing to, to put a major, major dent in that uh, at this time, uh, but we will be ready uh, if those circumstances change. Our Florida Department of Transportation has been clearing roads and, and shoulders uh, for the last few days. Uh, cut and toss efforts to clear roadways and highways will start as soon as the storm passes. Uh, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge and the Howard Franklin Blair Bridge have been temporary cl temporarily closed due to high winds and will be reopened as quickly as possible once conditions improve. And there are a number of roads uh, that have been flooded and that have been temporarily closed. And so as soon as it's safe, they obviously want to get everything back open. Uh, we also have FDOT crews staged to inspect coastal bridges and we'll be monitoring water levels at low-lying bridges near major river crossings, particularly in the northern part of Florida. As I mentioned yesterday, people with disability or special needs, uh, if you need assistance, uh, you can sign up at snr.flhealthresponse.com. That's the Florida Department of Health, snr.flhealthresponse.com. Uh, although we haven't had major power outages compared to some of the past storms, if you are without power and you want to use a generator, please do not use that generator inside your home. Make sure you're operating it 20 feet away uh, from, from the home. Uh, we don't want to see any, anybody get, get uh, killed based on uh, the carbon monoxide that will build up when those are run inside people's homes. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's been involved in the preparation efforts. Uh, we've got a lot of, of work ahead of us. There's going to be a lot of water that's going to be dumped uh, throughout the state, and we're going to see effects of that, uh, not just today, but in the ensuing days. Uh, but we uh, are prepared. We have the resources that we need, uh, and those will be deployed uh, as needed to help with uh, the recovery and the response efforts. And I'll turn it over now for further details to Kevin Guthrie. Thank you, Governor. Uh, appreciate you being here early this morning and late last night uh, and helping, uh, helping provide the necessary leadership that is needed for such an event like this. Um, as the Governor indicated, I'm going to start kind of where he's left off. Safety, safety, safety. We were starting to enter places like um, Tallahassee, Jefferson County. It will very quickly become Taylor County, Dixie County, where we are now cleaning up. So we need to make sure that we prevent those deaths. And I'll talk more about that. But we need to be safe. Please be safe and stay off the roads. If you are sheltering at home, do not leave at this point in time. Just stay where you're at. Conditions are going to continue to deteriorate outside, especially in the north central Florida and northeast Florida. It is, un it is unsafe to drive or walk anywhere. We've already experienced 10 to 12 inches of rain in some portions of southwest Florida to include Sarasota and Manatee County. Many streams and river, uh, rivers are rapidly rising. If you look at the USGS uh, river gauge summary, you will see that a lot of those are turning black or very, very dark blue. That means that those rivers are responding very quickly. So again, we expect to have several rivers and streams go into major flood stage. So please be careful if you live along those areas. Some of these areas will continue to receive upwards of 15 to 20 inches of rain. All of that will drain into the river basins. Um, this is going to be an event that is going to be probably here for the next five to seven days, maybe as long as 10 days, depending on how much rainfall we get. So we are not running anywhere. We are staying put, and we are going to make sure that we're here to respond. I want to reiterate the hazards from this storm uh, will be seen and felt far outside the center of the cone. Flood impacts are going to be felt everywhere across north central Florida. This storm is massive, with hurricane force winds extending 25 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extending 140 miles from the center, covering much of the state from the I-4 corridor all the way north to the state line. We've already had more than 35 tornado warnings issued across the state of Florida. Rest assured that stage resources are safe, secure, and ready for deployment to the impacted areas. We have six active fuel depots for first responders across North Florida with over 600,000 gallons of fuel as of this morning. We have 850 debris disaster management sites should we need to do debris operations. We will most likely see additional tornadic activity as the storm makes landfall this morning and moves across North Florida. Please remember that if a tornado warning is issued in your area, you need to get to an interior room, 
much most likely your your bathroom in your home free of windows and doors and make sure that you stay hunkered down in that area if you happen to have something you can throw over your body such as a blanket or maybe even a light mattress this will certainly help as well be prepared for power outages the governor talked about that we will have power outages the nice thing is is this a cat one hurricane it's again it's not going to be as widespread as we saw in hurricane adelia and hurricane ian but nevertheless we will have those uh those power outages please do everything you can to stay safe and comfortable where you're at because first responders need to be able to reach you and get to other people during the time of storm take care of yourself and your family sheltering in place as long as it needs to as long as that needs to happen ambulance ambulances search and rescue teams and other first responders will not be able to get to you during unsafe weather I know many of you may start calling for 911 services but until those winds typically in each county die below 440 miles an hour sustained winds they will not be able to respond but as soon as they can they will and we have plenty of resources staged to come in and assist after storm related deaths are preventable and I'll say that again after storm deaths are preventable we see the majority of our storm related deaths especially in low end category hurricanes happen after landfall you heard the governor talk about generator safety please make sure again reiterate 20 feet away from any open door or window make sure that you wait 20 minutes before refilling a generator also it, it in much of our much of our state has um, senior citizens please do not get up on a ladder do not try to put a tarp on a roof do not try to cut a limb we have volunteer organizations that will come and help you with that all you need to do is reach out to your local emergency management agency or call our cell line and we will make sure somebody comes and helps you on your property do not risk yourself do not risk injury we will come and help you thanks to the leadership and dedication of the governor of DeSantis Florida is the leader in emergency management and we continue to show it through this disaster response we are the best at what we do the men and women that are sitting on that floor behind me worked all night long most of them came in at 2 or 3 a.m. this morning and they will be here through the duration of the day and into the night tonight we want to make sure you get the latest information and to do so please continue to follow us on X and Instagram at FLSERT that's at FLSERT and on Facebook at FDM for updates governor as always thank you so much for your leadership and your assistance as we respond to this disaster so the uh, as a storm uh, continues to, 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 to head north uh, even when it's primarily affecting southern Georgia I mean all that all that rain and all the water when when that's there that eventually comes down in, into the northern part of Florida so when you're talking about flooding you're looking to see the water that's happening in real time as the storm passes you but then there's going to be after effects from this storm uh, you're going to continue to see some of these uh, rivers rise uh, so there's going to be an ongoing threat of flooding that is not going to end simply when the storm uh, passes so so just be be aware of that uh, be prepared for that uh, we have a lot of assets in place and and you know we're going to be there to help people get through it and i think that we have probably marshaled uh, more assets than we're going to need to be able uh, to, to, to respond. Uh, but there will likely be many days where people are going to have to look to see what's happening with the water, particularly uh, as we talk about getting into the northern part of the state. So I want to thank everybody who's worked to, to get to this point. Uh, they've um, started preparing when this thing wasn't even an organized storm, just because we know how these things can happen. And so, so the preparation's been good, and, and now we're uh, prepared to respond uh, accordingly. Okay, any questions? When do you expect you'll be able to get out? So um, we, we think maybe, maybe later today. Um, I don't know if we will fly today, um, but you know, if you look at some of the places in the Big Bend, that's obviously accessible via, via ground transportation, so we, we may do that. Uh, I know Kevin's also going to 
He has staging areas in different parts of the state. He's going to move some uh, of, of the, the resources closer to the Sarasota Bradenton area uh, just because they've had a really significant amount uh, of water uh, dumped on them and we're seeing seeing the effects of that. But uh, we will we will get out as soon as we can. How has the flood control around the power substations held up so far? Well, I'll let Kevin if he wants to say, uh, but if you look at the power outage numbers, um, this is incredibly modest compared to what we've dealt with in past storms. I mean, Hurricane Ian, I mean, you had millions of people that, that were out. The restoration was the fastest has ever been for, for a major hurricane. Uh, but now we're talking about hundreds of thousands. Obviously, as this storm goes throughout the northern part of Florida, you may see, you may see more outages. Uh, but what we're seeing is is not at the level of Idalia and certainly not at the level of Ian. Now, whether that's because of the, the devices that we've put in or just because the storm is, is not as, as powerful as those, maybe it's a combination. Yeah. I, I mean, the governor certainly said it best, Cody, and that is, um, you know, we, we've got stuff out right now and it's still being impacted, but as of right now, the substations where we have installed stuff with Florida Power and Light and a couple of other locations, no issues whatsoever on those substations. Uh, the places where we have put it out at hospitals, no issues of flood inundation into the hospitals. So these are, again, we learned this over Idalia and Ian. These are best practices, and it, it proves that the nation taking Florida's lead and underneath the governor's leadership of building capability and capacity through disasters, we can be good at flood response events. So again, uh, it, it, as the governor has said, we haven't had any issues to date. I just, uh, one more reminder, the, these, uh, when the water rises, when you have streets that can be flooded, uh, the, the, that's hazardous. And in some respects, you know, that, that's even more hazardous than, than some of the other aspects uh, of these storms. Uh, so, so just please take the adequate precautions. Uh, don't try to drive through this. Uh, we don't want to see traffic fatalities, um, you know, adding up because people are out there uh, when the roads aren't aren't safe yet. It's gonna, it'll be fine. Uh, all this stuff gets taken care of. All the roads will be will be open um, in the not too distant future. These guys are working really hard. But sometimes when there's uh, when there's a lot of water on the roads, it can be very very hazardous. So so, so please, uh, don't tempt fate. Don't try to go and, uh, and go through these uh, flooded streets. Uh, and as that happens, take the proper precautions. And uh, I think that we'll all be better off uh, for that. I know people want to get different places, uh, but sometimes these roads uh, can be very, very hazardous. We do anticipate a lot of water to continue to be dropped with this storm. And, and this is just something that people are going to have to uh, be very, very aware of. Uh, so we'll be back with, with another update, and we will probably end up somewhere uh, by, uh, by the end of the day as well. So um, when you deal with storms, if there's a traffic accident, we count it, right? I mean, so, but, I mean, we, we, did, we do have a report uh, in Dixie County of a car hydroplaning and crashing. Uh, we also have a report, uh, what was it, an 18-wheeler in Hillsborough, Hillsborough County, right off I-75. Um, was that because uh, of the roads per se on that one? I don't know, because we do have traffic accidents, but what we do is once we're in a storm situation, any accidents that are within that area, they will be uh, categorized and reported accordingly.